Welcome to episode 5 of Kerbal Space Program, but it's real skill. In this one, I'm about to waste half, half a million dollars to improve our tracking station because we're going to launch a probe all the way out to Jupiter. Though we're probably not going to be able to see Jupiter just yet. Mostly because it's probably going to take around a year for the probe to get there in the first place. But we're in a decent transfer window for it, and I just want to launch it now while we can. Before I launch this, you may notice all these parachutes on the boosters. This is because I got the stage recovery mod, which will allow me to recover some of the funds, around 80% of the funds from these boosters, with how they're landing right now. Um, and just let me recycle them, which means these $13,000 engines aren't going to complete waste, but I get around 10000 um, back just from the engine alone, which is huge considering we're recovering eight of them. All right, here we are. We're getting these messages. Shows us exactly how much money we got back from those boosters. Now here we got seventeen thousand dollars back for that, just one of the little boosters. But uh, we recovered two. And we just got a second pair there. It's basically uh, just eliminating launch costs. And you can't do it in stock KSP. Uh, mostly because it leaves physics range. Alright. Now, because I'm not familiar with the real life solar system, I'm actually going to have to use maneuver notes for this. Even though I'm fairly certain I just burned prograde. A long ways, but I want to know exactly how much I'm burning and how long that burn's going to take, especially with this uh, liquid fuel stage, which is a tad long of a burn. All right. Um. Besides getting rid of most of our thrust, looks like we're getting a uh, decent encounter. All right. This is one of the longer stages. We'll only have a thousand meters a second um, to make like course corrections in deep space, but I'm pretty sure this will end up decently. Well, guess we've done basically Voyager One, but on a very cheap budget. Honestly, I don't have much of a use for the probe after, so sending it out there might be a fun idea in 128 years when it leaves the solar system. Um, but if I have enough feel for like rendezvous and stuff, it's fine. I just wanted to know how good that would be. Apoapsis, uh, Jupiter mission, don't forget about me. <laughs> okay, that's now in like the universal alarm clock. Like, no matter what mission I'm doing, I'll be notified when this ship gets there in three years so um <laughs> uh basically we don't have to worry about this thing for a long time now my second mission plan for today's episode is setting up the geostationary network around Kerbin using these fairly cheap satellites uh, the thing with these satellites is, I want them to be cheap as possible and get as much coverage as possible. We don't really need eight, like three is probably enough. But why not go overkill if you can, right? Plus, we get to see a cool little thing, like a network bubble thing. All right, so now we're in geostationary orbit, and we're just going to start releasing these. Not all willy-nilly. Um, we're going to use our engines here to just bring us down. We're going to circle a few times, and rinse and repeat, basically. I don't want this mission lasting more than, like, freaking 20 days.
There we go. Those are nice weak ones. Go out more gently. Doesn't affect the um the orbit as much. Though we are running critically low on fuel. So we're gonna do a bit more of an uh, efficient layout here for the last three probes that we have left. Well, four if you count the middle one. Middle one's slightly stronger. Not antenna-wise, but like the probe is better. Because it's the mothership. That does take a lot longer. But it is a lot more efficient. Minutes, ten, five, four, three, two, one. Another quick save. Now we just restore the geostationary orbit and bring it on back down. And there goes the last of the little probes. Now we just got the big one and we put it in its final resting spot. We're, we're going to use half the fuel to get down, and then half the fuel to circularize again. So we're only going to burn only going to burn 19 meters a second backwards. But it's all in the name of efficiency. Because we did the mission as cheaply as possible. It's like 100 grand for all these satellites, and this will help loads in the future. Because every, like, every mission I've done so far... Every time I went over the ocean, I lost signal, and it was, it just sucked. I hated it. Alright, luckily this also got down to uh, 34 million meters, so I don't really have to worry about anything. Other than my contract's expiring, because it's been, it's been a month. I'm gonna check the planets. Uh, Mercury? Would be a cool idea if it didn't cost a lot to get there. And we still see our little Jupiter probe, the limited edition Mountain Dew 2020 mystery flavor number four. <laughs> you know, the standard name you give all your vessels. Uh, a meteor just crashed into Earth. I don't know if you saw that. Alright, and then I'll switch it over to the big boy camera. And by that I mean just switch up to network view on the satellite feed. There we go. Perfect. Out of fuel. Geostationary ring is in place. And here's the last satellite. Pretty basic. It's nothing much. It's the same thing except with a hex. So it's like $200 more expensive. Not including the engine and uh, the extra two solar panels it has. But I'd say that's a resounding success. We are beaming towards the moon right now. <laughs> Freaking Thargoid Earth, man. Alright. That should call it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you comment what mission you want to see. Uh, like, I can't really go anywhere I want at any time. Oh, wait, there's a meteor. Right here. Oh, wow. There's, <laughs> these guys are, like, crashing frequently. Uh, I can't do missions at any time I want. Mostly because these planets... They're real life planets, like they're where they are, kind of in real life. Uh, time frame's a bit off. I think this is in the past, from what I've seen, so we might be able to pick up the grand tour. Not sure how long that would take. I don't know, maybe if it starts at the beginning of the space program, then it would be like 20 something years, like 25 years or so, and then we can do the Voyager mission basically. And shoot past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Um, and we'll call it not Voyager 2. <laughs> because I'm just really creative like that. Anyway, that should be all for this episode. See ya.